Oh, well, my name's Fox Ryan Silver. Hey, I'm at Fox. And while gone, there goes my chair. While gone, um, I kind of wanted to, I'm, um, you know, make a couple videos and stuff like that. Well, before I leave, and well, this will be out uh, the 25th, I think. But um, as anyone who's seen any of my stuff or at least heard me talk about stuff, I like to write stories. And most recently, I actually started writing. A uh, little side story that I wanted to work on, and it's inspired by a couple of things. If you can, re if you can, if you can listen to a bit of it, but um, I kind of want to read. I wanted to try this a little bit. It's kind of like an excerpt, I guess, or at least it's the prologue to the series. And I kind of just wanted to try it out, just to read it off, see what you guys think, and maybe if it's Maybe if you guys like this enough, maybe I'll start making more, maybe I'll start reading more of the chapters or something like that. I don't actually know. But in any case, I really want to try this and, you know, it gives me a little bit more practice on voice acting, I guess, for a little bit. Hey anyway, guys, let's get in this, into the tutorial of Starblade. Wow, that sounds like a stupid god thing. Any case, this, anyways. A young man sits on the black sandy beach as what seems to be a night sky shines above him. The sound of a dark bluish water rolling along the sand, filling his ears as he focuses on the sound. The young man raises his right black gloved hand out in front of him as he continues to listen to the ocean, taking deep breaths as he begins to listen for another sound, one that resembles the water, yet different. The boy found the new sound and focused on it. As he felt the creator of the sound swirl around his open palm, the molecules, atoms, chemicals in the air spun around in his hand, picking up speed as well as energy, until the forming into a small ball of plasma that quickly began to expand. Now the boy truly needed to focus as he compressed the miniature star with a pure will and an unseen energy. Now he searched for a new sound, one of crackling crystals. It took a bit of time before the crackling noise could be heard, but when it was, the miniature star was then encased in a yellow crystal-like substance, taking the shape of a five-pointed star. Now the young man continued to manipulate the crackling noise as it formed into a handle made of blue crystal that formed around the crystallized star along the edges. This crystals then continued to form above the handle into a four-foot blade that edged off at the end. The weapon's blade seemed to be dull, but it gave off a warm glow from its yellow core that emanated throughout the blade. A star blade, huh? A woman's voice asked. <laughs> That's a woman's voice. As the hooded woman walked towards the young man. The woman and the young man both wearing similar dark blue vests that stop at their midriff and each with a five-pointed star design on their backs. The rest of the woman's attire was made up of what seemed to be bike shorts that stopped thigh length, pieces of cloth covering her legs and knee, knees down, giving a bottom bell look. Bell bottom look. A skin-tight, seemingly flexy material shirt that ended at her belly button. On her arms, she also had these bell bottom-like cloths from her elbows down. And on her right shoulder pad, a small mark that resembled a circle with a line through it. The woman's brown hair was hidden up beneath the hood, but her fair lighter skin tone could easily be seen. The boy, on the other hand, had long blue hair that drifted past his waist as he stooped. As he stooped up, what the fudge did I write there? Waist as he stood up, holding his new blade in hand. The boy's clothing somewhat resembled the woman but he wore baggy gray pants that were tucked into his leather boots at the end, while his shirt covering his whole upper body, though sleeveless. The young man's dark brown skin seemed to blend in with the darkness of the night as he walked towards the older woman. I was hoping my apprentice would follow in his beautiful master's footsteps and create a similar weapon in her honor. The hooded woman said with a smile, the young man shrugged the comment off. But then again, as you develop ah, God damn. But then again, as you develop your skill with your star blade, the cosmic energy should bestow a new form to it as you grow stronger. Perhaps one resembling your masters, just a tiny bit? The woman asked the young man who merely sighs. 
She laughed a bit before continuing. Just creating your weapon on this world, it means it'll have its own special abilities at least. The woman explained to her pupil, walking towards him. But now then, now that you have a star blade of your very own, let me give you your first test with it. Open a portal. It's time to meet some cosmos. The woman tells the young man who slightly smiles. The young man raises the blade above his head as he listens for the crackling noise once again. The sound of strange water swirled around him as the crackling noise spins around the blade itself. Then with one mighty slash he cuts what looks like the fabric of the universe itself as the portal that seems to lead into a night sky appears before him. Not bad. Let's see where you're taking us, shall we? The woman asks as she walks into the portal. Her vest giving off a faint aura that completely encircles her when she when she enters. Oh, I almost forgot, the woman says as she turns to her apprentice, who's still standing on the black beach while the woman stands in what looks like an infinite night sky. Welcome. You're officially part of the followers of the constellation, she says with a smile to the young man. As the young man walks through the portal, he immediately falls into an endless night sky, the woman seemingly floating in midair above him as he falls. Every time we've walked through the cosmic, I've always had to make a solid enough path for both of us to walk on. Now you'll need to create your own path, she yelled to the young man known as Mur, who now is about four to five stories below her. Mur raised his blade in the air as he felt the surge of panic t begin to try to take him over. God dang, I missed that up. But he, held, but he held it back as he listened for the crackling noise. Once again, only this time, it was much, much louder. And all of, Wait, what? Mur raised his blade in the air as he felt the urge to panic begin to try to take him. But he held it back as he listened for the crackling noise once again. Only this time, it was much, much louder. And all around him. The young man swiped his sword again as the sound encircled his crystal blade and pulled what was creating the noise below the young man, forming to a rough, black, crystallized ground beneath him. The young man slammed onto the ground with his back, his body feeling pain shooting through him from the fall. Excellent. Now you know about three things your star weapon can do for its wielder. Opens portals to the Cosmic District, manipulate and channel cosmic energy around us, and also gives it shape. And last, it changes your gravity a Bit, so falling won't hurt you as bad. The woman explains as she slowly walks down to the boy, each step being placed on a clear glass-like platform that acts like a step. Now all we need is a Cosmo, the woman said as she's looking around the starry sky around them. Mo began to stand up, using his star blade as leverage as he got back to his feet, though it didn't hurt as much as it should have. The fall still hurt, yeah, but... It felt as if his back was being bruised. That was about it. FYI, I'm adding those extra bits there. <laughs> the Mur didn't have time to dwell on the pain as he had to react quickly as a black shadowy creature nearly swipes off his head. Mur dodged the shadowy creature, jumping backwards off the platform as a new rugged platform forms underneath him. Now then, this is what we call a seed. They are basically the lowest form of a cosmo. The woman said as she directing her protege to the small black mass of cosmic energy. The creature resembled a small ball of black goo, with many of what looked like to be tiny stars inside of it. Two of the stars much brighter than the rest and resembling white glowing eyes. The creature is encircled by four smaller orbs around its small orb body. They are known as seeds because their job is to implant themselves within a world, and then grow. Whether that be foliage, fabric, or even living beings themselves, anything with world energy inside of it. Though, that they- Ah, god dang it, I suck! Through that, they change their host into a new form of Cosmo, fitting the world they have infected. Then they spread from host to host until they are strong enough to swallow a world completely into the Cosmic District. But that's where we come in. The woman says as she reaches underneath her vest and pulls out what resembles a green crystallized handgun, with the barrel ending at a completely solid point. The followers of the constellation's duty is to stop the cosmos from consuming any world, using these weapons and armor bestowed upon us by the great constellation. 
The master continues to explain as she fires a blast from her crystal gun. A green surge of energy fires from the tip of the gun, shooting into the seed cosmo. The cosmo stars begins to turn green, and its black goo-like skin begins to bubble up, making a slightly screeching noise before it explodes. Our weapons are designed to deal with cosmos. Other weapons can dispel them for a time, but never send them away for good. Our star weapons, however, can dispel them permanently, as well as allow us to cross into their world. Though our vestments made of cosmic thread protect us from the district's large amounts of cosmic energy. Without our vest aura barriers, we'd absorb cosmic energy directly into us, which, let's just say, isn't good. She then placed her crystal gun into a holster on her back beneath her vest. But now then, let's begin your test, the woman says as she releases a large amount of world energy from her body. Just as she does this, more glowing eyes can be seen forming out of the endless night around the protege and the master. The young man readies his blade in one hand, holding the blade outward in front of him. You and your weapon need to learn how to get along with each other. Learn how each other move and act. Only then can you access its truest power. So good luck, and when you're done, uh, try to meet me back on the beach. She says with a smile before pulling her gun out again and firing a hole into the endless void, opening up another portal to the black sandy beach. Sink or swim, Mer, she says as she then quickly passes through it. More seeds begin to form out of the cosmic district, Mer hearing the crackling sound growing louder as they form more and more. The seeds merely looked at Mer as the young man took a deep breath. Time feeling as if it was slowing down, the creatures on Mer's third breath attacked, thrusting themselves at the follower. Their small orbing orbs turned into small sharp projectiles. Mer jumped above the attacking creatures, jumping about ten feet above them as he forms another platform underneath him. The creatures quickly reacquire their target's location and fly towards him. Mer spins his star blade around him as it begins to glow brighter. The swarm of seeds go in for their second attack. Can anyone tell I messed that up? As they fly towards Mer. Mer closed his eyes as he listened for the crackling sound of the cosmos, cosmic energy. Getting closer, the follower took one more breath before he spun around, slicing through one of the seeds behind him. The dull blade cuts right through the cosmic creature, the seed exploding in pure cosmic energy. Another three seeds fly towards the follower, who raises his blade and brings it down on one of the incoming creatures. While dodging the second seed and spinning to stab through the third, the second seed stabbed into Murr's back. Murr clenched his teeth in pain as he wielded his blade backwards and spun, cleaving the Cosmo in half. Murr quickly checked his back with his hand, but surprisingly there wasn't a stab wound on, his, on him or his vest. Murr's vestment protected him, though he could still feel where he was stabbed on his back. More seeds began to rise out of the cosmic as Murr gritted his teeth as he wielded his blade in front of him again. The seeds rushed at Murr as he yelled into the cosmic at them. His blade grew brighter as he blocks one of the incoming seeds with his blade. Murr spun as he cleaved two more in half. Another seed came rushing down from above, making Murr have to jump out of the way as well as step onto the head of one of the other seeds. The creature he landed on quickly takes action as it stabs into Murr's right leather boot with its claw, making Murr yell in pain as more of the creatures began to encircle him. Murr stabbed into the creature below him, popping it instantly as the star blade wielder then goes into a free fall, the cosmos chasing after him. Murr looked to his star blade, not knowing what to do as more and more of the cosmics begin to form out of the cosmic district, soon ranging in the hundreds are flying down after him. Murr then closed his eyes again and listened, only hearing the crackling noise of the cosmic district. But he kept searching for something, a new or familiar sound. Then he heard it, the sound rushing water, and he focused on the sound as his blade grew brightly. The seeds began to close in on Murr as he quickly spun around in his fall and sliced with his blade, cutting a hole into the cosmic district to a familiar black sandy beach. Murr fell through the portal onto the black sandy beach, the cosmics right behind him as their glowing eyes could be seen through the tear in the fabric of this world. The tear then closed on its own behind him. Murr then rolled onto his back, breathing heavily from the stress he just went through. Good job. You learned lesson one. When you're outnumbered, outclassed, or inexperienced, it's not cowardly to retreat. 
The master said the master said as she walked over to her pupil. Though that was a big swarm of seeds, they must have really liked you, she said with a smile. Now then, let's take a look at you, she says as she looks over Mer. See, you sustained some damage, but looks like the vestment shield was able to protect you from any major damage. Though I'm assuming you noticed that. Their attacks still hurt pretty badly if they make contact, she explained to her still extremely tired pupil. Well, don't get too comfortable. It's time to actually train you on how to wield your star blade, as well as learn how to form a reflection. She says as she then Mur sighing slightly as he just lays there. Well, I'm pretty sure that I botched this up some way, but oh god, 20 minutes, Jesus! I suck at reading, don't I? But in any case, um, this was just a small little thing I wanted to try. Um, if you guys are interested in it, tell me in the comments below. Tell me what you guys think. Maybe I'll read the next one. I'll probably be uploading these to mine and Hood's DeviantArt page. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I, I, this is just a side project I've been working on other than Sailor No. And it's, um, adds a little backstory to some things. But in any case, um, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me if you guys want to see more of this. Or, I guess, listen to more of this if you have any ideas. Uh, but either way, thank you so much for watching. Links are on, links around this video. So, there's buttons down there somewhere. Just thank you so much for watching. Just comment your videos and tell me what you guys think. And we will. See you later. <laughs>